Hey everybody, welcome back to Museum Grack Reads. My name is Elizabeth and today we're doing a vlog for the Trans Rights Readathon. <laughs> Okay, so today is March 20th, which means that it's the first day for a brand new readathon that was started by Sim Bookstagramming Badly, um, who is an author who has set up this readathon specifically to bring awareness around trans rights, but also trans authors, authors who write diverse trans characters and awareness and funding for trans organizations around our communities, which is the extra cherry on top that made this oh so sweet and I had to get in on it. So I am planning to tackle a few books and I've listed a few of them here, but we know, we know I'm a mood reader. Who knows which of these are I'm gonna get to or if I'm gonna completely throw this list out and try something else completely different. But whatever I read, I am raising funds um, and donating funds to Thrive Youth Center. So for every book that I read, I am going to be donating $20 to Thrive Youth Center. And they are a local organization that provides emergency and transitional housing for LGBTQ youth. They also provide transitional support for trans youth, specifically with legal support and getting their gender change pushed through um, and and getting them set up with gender affirming haircuts and clothing, all sorts of things. They're doing really important work here in Texas where I'm sure most of you are aware is kind of a strange hellscape most days. So I'm gonna leave some information about Thrive Youth Center below in the description. And if you feel so inclined, I highly encourage you to go check them out and perhaps make a donation yourself. My goal is to read five books, but I'm not sure I'm gonna get there. Either way, we're gonna be raising money for Thrive. So let's see how we go. I'm not sure if you can hear. But Little Miss is purring up a storm in my lap already. Um, and that means that I can't go get the cover for my first read because I've already I've already nakedified it. Um, and so first we're gonna start off with The Light from Uncommon Stars. This is by Rika Aoki. I am so excited for this book. This has been on my TBR for at least a year and I actually received this copy from a fun whatnot auction and giveaway that the Rumi's Digest did several months back. It was really cool. We all kind of hung out. It was almost like a TikTok live. So instead of just hanging out, putting weird cowboy hats on people, I think that's what you do on TikTok. I don't know. I'm an old lady. Um, but instead of doing that, we actually talked about books. We did a lot of Q and A's and they did giveaways that were all themed around different genres. And they did auctions for various books that they were interested in, including the Light from Uncommon Stars. Now, this is a science fiction uh, written by a trans author, and I know very little about it, except that it sounded vaguely intriguing when I heard about it a year and a half ago. That's enough to get something on my TBR, quite frankly. It takes very little, and often I don't love having too much information going into a book, um, and that's what we're gonna do with this one. We're gonna have very little information going into Light from Uncommon Stars, but you know what? I bet we're gonna have a good time. Also, I've just filmed the entirety of my intro looking like a swamp raccoon. Why? Because you know what? This week is about trans rights and self-care. That's what we're going with because you know what? We all need to take care of ourselves and our community. So that's where we're at. I'll check in and let you know how this one's going, but I'm really excited. I think this is going to be at least a four-star read for me. Okay, bye. Okay, okay, okay. I'm I'm not a well-prepared booktuber, but I do like to go into books blind, so I should have probably looked up Light from Uncommon Star synopsis before I dug into it, but literally in the first chapter, it all came back to me. So... From what I understand from my memory of the summary is that there's one character who 
is trying to beat a deal with the devil or something. So they are responsible for getting a certain amount of souls traded in, specifically around music. And they're almost done with their mission. And then there's a young trans girl who's run away from home who happens to be a musician. And somehow or another, they run into an alien in a donut shop. Um, that's just from the first chapter where we have um, the young girl running away from home. It all came back to me. A la Celine Dion. It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me now. Yep. Curious as to how in what does not feel like a sci-fi universe immediately, we're going to have an alien in a donut shop. Um, curious about this deal with the devil situation. It's kind of a paranormal alien situation, maybe? We shall see. We shall see. Okay. First of all, I feel as wrung out as I look. I am in the grips of event season for work. And I'm just running on fumes a bit, but I am still doing my Trans Rights Readathon reading and I wanted to give you guys an update. So I am about halfway through uh, Light from Uncommon Stars. I'm having a really good time. I find the characters really intriguing and interesting. However, while I am curious about why our violin instructor has sold her soul to the devil, presumably, um, I'm not necessarily that motivated by the plot. I think this is going to be warm, fuzzy characters, minimal plot, all vibes. That's kind of my prediction at the halfway point. Um, granted, we do have a better idea of why we have an alien running a donut shop. Um, we've gotten to know our young runaway violinist quite a bit more and Frankly, I just, I want to wrap her up in a great big fluffy blanket and take care of her. Um, I, I, I foresee some bad things happening in the next couple chapters and I, I don't want it for her. Um, I think she needs to be safe and loved. And I, I know this is probably going to have a happy ending. It's going to be sunshine and rainbows and everybody's going to ride off into the sunset, possibly on a spaceship. That's my prediction at this point. So that's light from Uncommon Stars. We're having a good time there. I have also started, however, another book that I have as a neck alley arc, and that is Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall. I love Alexis Hall. Alexis Hall is a gender fluid romance writer. You've probably seen his work um, with A Lady for a Duke, Boyfriend Material, possibly the Winter Bakes It All series. I'm really enjoying his books. I've been reading a lot of them. Um, so when I had my neck alley approve mortal follies even though it's not coming out for quite a while i was so excited and what better time to read it than when we are blowing the gender binary out of the water in the literary world so i've started this one this is a sapphic romance um i've just just started it it seems to have a fantasy element it takes place in kind of edwardian england but with magic as a reality so we are actually being led through this story by a narrator who is a fairy who can shift his shape and become basically shadow or light or a cup and saucer. He can put himself anywhere and therefore can observe humanity um, with them unawares. And he's taken a particular interest to a young girl who he sees at a party. And it turns out that the party she is at, suddenly something goes amiss as she's dancing and having a good time. Her, uh, the, the seam of her glove starts to fray. Uh, the hem of her dress starts to fray and suddenly her headpiece is missing and her glove is missing. And it turns out that the garment she wore was made by a fairy, but cursed. Like it was a trick and the clothing was disappearing on her. So she runs out of the party um, ends up in her underclothes outside and runs into 
a woman who is actually the only surviving child of a duke and has taken on the moniker as the duke and not a duchess. Um, and really, that's where I'm at. I've, I've just started, but I find it very intriguing. And I'm excited. I'm excited. Alexis Hall very rarely does me wrong. And uh, I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to have a really good time. So my dearest hope is that I can finish Light from Uncommon Stars tonight uh, and then get some progress made into Mortal Follies. I would love to get both of those books finished before the weekend so I could start fresh and power through a couple more titles before the readathon's over because I want to donate some money. I need I need to get to reading. I finished my first book for the Trans Rights Readathon last night, and that was The Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This was an interesting time. I enjoyed myself. I think I'm going to give it like a 3.54 stars. Had a good time. I just, I'm not sure who I would recommend this book to. It doesn't fit into most sort of genre buckets. Um, which I think makes sense. There's a bit of sci-fi. There's a bit of sort of fantasy elements. I, I don't know. I think if this synopsis, if you take a look at it, sounds interesting to you. I think it's definitely worth picking up. There's a beautiful lyricality to how this is written, which makes a lot of sense because most of this actually ends up focusing around music and specifically violin. I was particularly moved by Katrina's character um, and her experience as a trans teen. I think there's a lot for people to dig into there. But at the same time, there was a lot that just felt unnecessary. For example, the alien has four children, two of which I could never tell apart. At one point, one of them like goes off the deep end and they put him in a stasis field. This might be a spoiler, but at the same time, like I couldn't tell you who he was at the at when it was all happening. But he was so unimportant that they could literally box him up in a cube, and I didn't notice that he was really missing after that. Um, so that was kind of frustrating. But there was a specific passage in the book that talks about musicality and the phrasing of music as a metaphor for life. Musicians memorize passages, they memorize phrases in music, and then they have to connect the phrases. Um, and just, just like life, we focus on who we are in that moment. We memorize that moment, we live out that moment. But the importance is we have to connect the current moment to the next, and people can get stuck in repeating patterns. You can go down a rabbit hole of phrasing that leads you to nothing, um, and both with life and with music. So I honestly think that perhaps some of these dead ends or what feels like unnecessary phrasing is probably brilliantly intentional by Rika Aoki as part of her overarching metaphor for music. At least that's what I'm going with. If any of this sounds interesting to you, highly recommend. I think this very ambiguous, who knows what genre to put it in story was a really great start to the Trans Rights Readathon. I'm really excited uh, to see where my next book takes me. I've already started digging into Mortal Follies, which is, of course, as I'm sure I've already told you, by the gender fluid author Alexis Hall. I also have on deck The Deep by River Solomon, who is a non binary author. I adore both of these authors, so I'm really excited to dig a little further into their catalog. Okay, so that's that's that update. I finished a book. Yay! $20 to Thrive Youth Center. Woo! <laughs> very late. It's Saturday. I've actually been working and writing um, for quite a bit of the day today. So I'm really just now getting to dig in and enjoy some reading. And I've made it to the 40% mark of Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall. Um, this is a little earlier than normal to 
update you guys, but I just wanted to touch base because something got said that kind of tickled my brain a little bit. So we have um, May, who is the girl at the very beginning whose dress was disintegrating and was saved by a lady who was a duke, um, the Duke of Arrington. And turns out, as we've gotten further in, May is very much cursed. Uh, they do not know who has done it at first. Well, actually, we still don't know who's done it. We know who they've invoked to do it, but we don't know who has cursed her. Um, but there's definitely some romantic feelings between her and the Duke. Uh, she's got this best friend, Lizzie, and a cousin that are always in her sphere. Love them. Honestly, Alexis Hall's humor is just always going to be a hit for me. He has exactly the kind of just dry, but also utterly ridiculous comedy style that I just I soak up with my whole heart. And uh, the thing that kind of triggered me to want to give you an update um, so the thing that I wanted to update you guys on and why I came in to ping you guys a little bit early is at one point Lizzie, the friend, who's just a sweet, innocent, ridiculous thing, um, kind of reminiscent of the ridiculous co-worker in Boyfriend Material, who I adored. Honestly, my favorite part of Boyfriend Material. So love Lizzie. Lizzie is talking about having just read Jane Austen's newest novel, which turns out to be her second novel, Pride and Prejudice. Everyone's favorite, right? Everyone loves a good Pride and Prejudice moment. But she makes a statement that she was very disappointed because it didn't have the same characters. It's like, well, why would you expect there to be the same characters? Is that required of a second novel? She goes, well, yeah, at least for them to make an appearance because I assume anything that an author writes at least all takes place in the same universe. And they have this whole conversation where Lizzie believes that any author is constantly writing in the same universe. And now this book is very different from Alexis's other works because it is much more fantasy based. You, And that's much different from his more modern romantic comedies like Boyfriend Material or even his more traditional period romance in A Lady for a Duke because again, magic, like we've found out that the narrator that we've been hearing from this whole time is a hobgoblin, but I can't help but think that this is his way of telling us that these are all related somehow. This is the thing that's going to keep me up tonight. I feel like, I feel like Kronk in Emperor's New Groove, trying to figure out the poison for Cusco. Oh, right. The poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison chosen specially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison. Got you covered. What are you doing to me, Alexis? <laughs> okay, but anyway, having a good time, even if I'm going to go slowly insane, by trying to figure out how this book fits in with Winter Bakes It All. <laughs> Okay, it's Sunday, which means we've got Sarah on the TV, because that's what we do on Sundays here. And I've just finished my second book for the Trans Rights Readathon, and that is Mortal Follies. As I probably told you in the intro for this book, this is written by genderqueer author Alexis Hall. But I think ultimately what I'm left with at the end of this is that it felt very much like a fairy tale um, in a good way. I really enjoyed that. It felt like the musical Into the Woods with the tasks and challenges that all of our characters face. There's some good little moments of steam. There's some really great side characters. All in all, Alexis Hall so rarely disappoints me. So this was a neck alley arc and this book comes out on June 6th. I had to fit a neck alley arc in here. One thing you guys have to know about me is that my neck alley shelf is always out of control and I'm always trying to 
subdue it. So this was my attempt to make sure I still had a net galley arc in my reading this week. I definitely think that this is one that if you enjoy fairy tales, fantasies, even to a degree mythology, there's a lot of sort of old or area specific gods. There's some really interesting stuff about Druids and the Greeks in here. I think this is going to be one you're going to want to pick up. And that brings us to what is probably going to be the last book of the Trans Rights Readathon because this week has been much crazier than I would have liked um, and I didn't get as much reading done as I wanted. And that's going to be The Deep by River Solomon. River Solomon is a non-binary author. This is a novella that they wrote in conjunction with all of these folks, including David Diggs, who you would know from Hamilton fame. Um, I believe this is actually inspired by a song that David Diggs wrote, or David Diggs wrote a song based off of this project. I'm not sure, it, chicken or egg, which came first. What came first, the chicken or the egg? That actually has an answer. This one is an African mermaid story, which I had some really great and really terrible experiences with last year, which is what kind of held me on picking this up. This was also very kindly gifted to me by my secret Santa during the Rumi's Digest Secret Santa exchange last year. Um, so shout out to my amazing secret Santa. So I guess, I guess we're going to dive into the deep and see what this is all about. I'm a little concerned because some of my friends have DNF'd this. And when you DNF a novella, finish the deep. I didn't update you at all during it because it's only like 150 some odd pages. And that seems silly to try to update you in the middle of this. Um, so I will say I enjoyed it. It definitely has the mark of River Solomon's writing, even with the other authors who are part of this game of telephone, as they call it in the acknowledgments. River's voice still rings out very solidly and true from their other works because now I've read their entire back catalog. This really uses mermaids as a plot device truly to deal with the concept of generational trauma. I do enjoy River's work quite a bit. My favorite has to be The Unkindness of Ghosts. I think it tells a very comprehensive, well-balanced story. Um, I think Sorrowland had some pacing issues, especially towards the end. With The Deep being a novella, I was really worried that pacing was going to be an issue here as well. And I'm happy to say that I didn't have an issue with the pacing at all. The thing that I found a little bit more of a challenge with this one was connecting with character. I think there just wasn't enough time for Rivers to build a sense of empathy with really any of the characters. I mean, the overall empathy for the plight of this descendant species of aquatic humans, yes, but any specific character, not so much for me anyway. I think this would be a really interesting novella to full novel. Um, I think if Rivers wanted to explore this story or idea again, I would be down. Um, but if you've been interested in trying some of their work before and you don't know where to start, this is a pretty good spot. Although I will always put in a firm pitch for the unkindness of ghosts. So that's it. It's the last day of the Trans Rates Readathon, and I read a total of three books. I'll pop all the covers up here. Not as many as I wanted to get to, unfortunately, but this week has been quite crazy for me, and I'm really impressed that I managed to knock three out in total. I did say at the start of the video that I was planning on making a $20 donation to Thrive Youth Center for every book that I completed. I didn't read as many books as I wanted to, frankly. So I've thrown my stipulations out of the water, and I've donated a uh, nice round $100 to Thrive Youth Center in support of their work. I know that another friend of mine has also been reading in support of Thrive Youth Center, so thank you so much. And shout out to Jean, because 
she's actually the reason that I decided to really go forward and do this. As I said, this, this last couple of weeks have been pretty crazy for me and I probably would have maybe read one book um, or just posted and shared about it, but not really participated as fully in the readathon as I would have liked to, um, except while we were on sprints, as this was coming to fruition, she said that she was going to donate to one of her local organizations for every book that I read, as well as several other creators. So thank you, Jean. Uh, I appreciate you so much for being the encouragement that I needed to take this dive um, and get some really amazing books from my TBR off of my TBR and into my red pile and support a great cause while we're at it. So I have left a lot of information down in the description box about Thrive Youth Center and about the Trans Rights Readathon. I'm really hopeful that this continues on year over year. This was so much fun. I think this was such a unifying and wonderful experience. Um, but I also want you to check out Thrive Youth Center. Uh, take a look at the work that they do and find organizations like this in your own communities because it's it's these grassroots efforts that are really making a huge difference for folks on a really intimate level. And if you feel so compelled to, consider making a donation to a trans rights organization of your choice. So you know all the usual things. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to hit that like button. Let me know what you were reading for Trans Rights Readathon down in the comments below. If you're interested in possibly seeing more from me, consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. You're really helping my channel grow. I can't believe that over the course of this week, I hit 100 subscribers. I'm floored, I'm humbled, and I am oh so grateful. So thank you so much for all of the support. Anyway, till next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.